created by Emily Lewis Sky and Adam Price, Ragnarok, starring David Staxton in the lead role, is finally returning to Netflix with its third season. As season 3 is about to start streaming soon, we thought this would be the perfect time to give you an overview and recap of the series so far so that you can have a hassle-free viewing experience. A spoiler warning is in order as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the series, so if you haven't been able to catch up with the series yet, maybe you should pause the video and get back to watching it on Netflix. But if you are done watching it already, kindly follow us through this video. And yeah, while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel, it helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on. Tudid, Loritz and Magde visit the Norwegian town of Edda once more. When the boys were young, their father mysteriously passed away in Edda, so their family left the town. Their vehicle slows down as they approach Edda behind Wotan in his mobility scooter, who comes to a stop while attempting to make a right turn. When she approaches Magne as he exits the vehicle to assist Wotan. She compliments Magne on being a good boy and then touches his forehead to bless him while gazing up at him intently. His eyes briefly change, the brothers study at the neighborhood high school, Magne, who is awkward befriends Isolde, a green movement activist who accuses the Jutul family of causing local pollution. He makes the ascent with Isolde to the glacier that she has been observing for a long time. On top of the mountain, Vidar parks his car, it disrobes before stalking a reindeer tearing out its heart and devouring it. Magne rushes down the mountain after receiving a text from Loretz, but it turns out to be a false alarm. Magne watches in horror as Isolde crashes her paraglider into power lines and perishes. Magne throws his father's sledgehammer into a thunderstorm that night out of frustration. With a flash of lightning, it vanishes into the clouds. Vida's windshield is shattered as Magne's hammer travels 1.5 kilometers. Tudid blames Magne after recognizing it from the news. Isolde's passing is lamented by the students. Magne believes it wasn't a coincidence. According to the police, Isolde was struck by lightning before hitting the power lines. However, it took an hour before the lightning started, when she tells Tudid that the heroic journey of her son has begun. Magne purchases a new sledgehammer and launches it at a distance of 541 meters, breaking the world record. Magne boasts of his ability to throw a hammer and Loritz laughs. Loritz then goes to a school dance wearing his mother's fashionable shirt. Ran and Wither talk about character flaws in people. Vidar acknowledges killing Isolde and he looks for her phone because it contains images of the illegal waste disposal by Jutul Industries. The dance features strange occurrences. The Jutuls are impacted by the rock music that Fio plays in the old language. After becoming excited, Ran seduces two young boys privately. Loritz joins Fior and Saxa in an odd dance. Oscar and Loritz watch as Fior pisses on Isolde's monument. Oscar updates his Instagram with the picture, Magne pays Eric a visit and they talk about their sorrows. As a result of Fior's urinating on Vidar's work, Vidar beats him up severely. Gry, who is staying the night, witnesses Fior being beaten. When the Seiyas get home from Isolde's funeral, their house has been looted. When Lori's headphones are stolen, the Seiya's brother confronts a junkie. The junkie saw Vida's car was at the scene and the house had been ransacked before he arrived. Magde vents his anger at the police to Sinre and discusses his concerns about Vida's possible involvement. Ran is informed by Sinre and she informs Vida about it. Eric hands Magne sold this computer. While driving, Fio, Gry, Saxa and Loritz witness the windscreen being smashed by a bird. Saxa eats it even though it is still alive. Magne challenges Bjornholt's version of events when he questions her about the inconsistencies surrounding Isolde's death. He made a trip that would have taken 90 minutes to complete in an hour. He is blackmailed by her to refrain from raising certain issues. Magne then times himself while running later and completes 100 meters in 7 seconds. As a snowplow strikes Magne, Veda kills the drug addict. He informs the other Jutals that Magne is dead and that it is unsafe for them to have close relationships with people. Saxa is shocked to see Magne unharmed when she arrives at school. Magne and Loritz are invited to a meal at Jutul's house, Jutulheim. Magne is unaffected by alcohol until they give him meat. During their arm wrestling match, he sees Rand's true self and loses to her. Magne's reflection appears as a bloody bearded warrior in the bathroom mirror. Magne carries on his all this research by looking into the Jutul's contribution to Edda's water pollution issue. While avoiding the increasingly worried Jutul's, he gains more knowledge about his own abilities. Eric and Tudit become friends and eventually they begin dating. 
Gra is a potential love interest for both Magna and Fior. Magna is duped by Loritz into publicly confessing his love for Gra while on a school camping trip in the mountains. Despite the fact that she loves Fior more than Magna, she still cares for him. Magna discovers that the smell of the raw reindeer meat is the same as the blood that was on Isolde's jacket when she died after witnessing Vida slicing it up. Magna concludes Vida was responsible for her demise and issues a warning to Vida that he will not get away with it. Vida observes that the marking on Magna's knife matches the one on the hammer that smashed his windshield. Magna follows Gray and Fjord, so Vida sends his hellhound Trim to kill Magna. Magna kills Trim after a struggle between the two. Gray discovers the family is in trouble when she and Fjord go to the Chutul's house because all of the Chutul's appear to have remained physically unchanged over the years in old photographs and older artworks. Because Magna murdered him, albeit in self-defense, the Jutus plan to punish him. Ran, Sindre, Eric and Turid are present at the meeting where Magna proposes to write a critical paper about Jutul Industries. He is compelled to give Eric Isolde's laptop back. Isolde's phone, which Eric discovered on the mountain, is nonetheless given to Magna in private. Magna unlocks it and discovers photos that show Jutul Industries' involvement in the water pollution. When he climbs the mountain, he finds 2,500 barrels in a recently exposed cave that have leaked toxic heavy metal waste into Eda's water supply, including cadmium. Magna informs the police about the barrels' presence. However, all the toxic barrels are gone when the police arrive to conduct their investigation. The police felt obligated to let Jutul Industries know in advance of their visit. The claims made by Magna are not taken seriously by the police or his high school administration. Magna's disruptive behavior leads Rand to suspend him from school. He must attend a psychological assessment and treatment in the interim. Fior's family puts more and more pressure on him to end the relationship, but Gry persists in her relationship with him despite thinking he is straight. Magna is misdiagnosed with schizophrenia by a psychiatrist hired by Jitur, and it does not take the antipsychotic pills prescribed to him. Magna's hostility to a Jutul is criticized by Turid. Fior expresses feelings for Gry and works to support her family. He tells Magna that Jutul Industries' hazardous barrels are about to be transported elsewhere. With Sexa threatening to do it herself, Jutul commands Fior to kill Gry. Magna leaves hazardous barrels at the police station on the morning of Constitution Day. In spite of Vida's attempts to quiz Ingvild, police finally launch an investigation. Magna departs from Edda's community celebration to accompany Fior and Cry to an abandoned warehouse. Magna intervenes to stop Fior from attacking Cry. Magna is attacked by Vidar after he recognizes him as Thor. Magna cautions Fior and Cry to leave before the fight. Magna almost loses control of Vidar, but he summons lightning to strike him. Magna is struck by lightning and is hurt, but he lives. During the festivities, Lord is dressed as Ran makes a pretentious speech in front of the entire town mockingly pointing out that despite Norway being a democracy, there is actually no choice for the average person while Jutuls takes advantage of them. Jutuls are least impacted by climate change because of their privileged position. Vidar and Magne both live after their altercation. As Wench observed, she transformed into an eagle and took off. In the alternate reality that Wench transports Magne to, he discovers that he must prepare for a battle by assembling a team and forging Mjolnir, his weapon. Over Magna's expanding authority, Jutul's conduct a war council. Fjord makes the choice to relocate to Gry's home in Jutulheim. Magna tells Loritz that he is the reincarnation of Thor. According to him, the giants known as the Jutuls have declared war on the gods and Magna. Loritz does not agree with Magna. Regarding Edda's pollution, Jutul Industries is questioned. Saxa begins to study its industries. Iman, a new student, participates in Magna's conflict with the Jutuls. Together, they make use of her mental abilities at Loritz's party. Since Jens, the love of his life did not appear, Loritz feels dumb. In addition to feeling different from Asbjorn or Magne, he admits to Turid that he also feels alienated because of his sexual orientation. Vida, Loritz's biological father, is revealed to have been involved in an affair by Turid. Harry is persuaded to help make Mjolnir by Magne and Iman. Magne finds Loritz and Vida hugging when he gets home. He finds it impossible to accept Loritz as Vida's child. And he understands that having vowed to slay Magne, the Jutul Patriarch did so. Vida spends time getting to know Loritz by taking him on a motorcycle ride up the mountain. He asks Loritz to spy on Magne, but Loritz recognizes the ruse right away and declines. 
Vidar is not upset and keeps hanging out with Loritz. They quarrel when Magne tries to forbid Loritz from going to Vidar. Loritz accuses Magne of jealousy as Loritz now has his father Vidar. Harry's mocked up hammer does not return to his hand as Mjolnir should as it was improperly forged without ancient metal or magical fire. Vidar invites Loritz to Jutalheim and proffers old world meat. After drinking, Vidar performs a ritual to make Loritz one of the giants. Loritz stands in front of the bathroom mirror and sees himself as a dark-haired, shadowed figure with a tattoo, who blows him a kiss. Loritz realizes he is the embodiment of Loki and now believes what Magne had been saying. Loritz tells Magne that even if Vidar is his father, they are still brothers and informs him that Rand plans to kill Wench as she was helping Magne. Magne rushes to Wench but is too late to save her from Rand's old world arrow. Before dying, when she leaves her magical necklace to Wotan with summons Odin's spirit. Loritz manipulates Vidar into getting Jutalheim's key. Magne and Loritz sneak into Jutalheim's living room. They intend to use what they mistakenly think is an eternal flame to forge Mjolnir. Both are caught by Vidar and Loritz is labeled a traitor as they escape. Rand convinces Vidar to kill Loritz. Magne, Loritz and Iman meet Wotan. Wotan does not allow Loritz to join the team as he is a giant and being treacherous is his nature. Angrily, Loritz steals Wotan's blood and injects himself to become half-god and half-giant. A protest against Chutul Industries includes local high school students. As Vidar's car is blocked, Loritz begs Vidar to let him rejoin and Vidar agrees. In Jutalheim, Vidar tells Loritz he is invulnerable to all weapons except for old world ones. He takes an old world axe intending to kill Loritz. Loritz, who had begun to care for Vidar, freezes in denial that his father would really try to kill him. Magne, who had followed Loritz, sees Vidar raising the axe, steps in and fight ensues between the two, ending with Magne killing Vidar to save his own and Loritz's life. Magne feels guilty for killing Vidar and losing Loritz. Rand develops emotions, but Saxa remains focused on her goals. Jutal Industries regulations declare only the eldest son takes over. Saxa works to use up the position. Meanwhile, Fear's feelings for Gry increase. Loritz refuses to acknowledge Vidar's killing attempt. Magne decides he cannot kill again, but Wotan declares that is impossible. Magne gives up the word, and Loritz has an intestinal tapeworm. Gry tells Fior to leave Era. Fior promises not to attend Vidar's funeral and join them. Iman fails to convince Magne to rejoin and recruits Harry. Loritz has emergency surgery for his tapeworm, Jormugander. He takes it home. Loritz alters his appearance to match Vidar's. Meanwhile, Saxa tries to change Fio's mind and grants Saxa total control over the Jutul Industries. She calls him a coward before leaving. On the day of the funeral, Magne, overwhelmed by his brother's new appearance, runs up to the mountains, wishing for normalcy. Arriving late to Vidar's funeral, Magne prays for the removal of his powers and they are lost. Fio changes his mind about leaving Edda. He attends the funeral and decides to avenge Vidar. Gry leaves Edda while Fio claims Vidar's old world axe. Fio takes over Jutul Industries, excluding Saxa. Neither Iman nor Harry acknowledge Magne anymore. Loritz, in the meantime, returns to Jutulheim, where Rand demands his key. Rand confirms that Vidar had agreed to kill him. Turid finds Loritz keeping Jormugander, which she thinks is disgusting, but allows him to continue. Magne tells Loritz he gave up his powers and they hug. Fior, in the meantime, fights Turid as she is Loritz's mother. Magne confronts Fior, but is knocked down easily. Magne asks Wotan to rejoin without killing anyone. After Fior is back, Rand takes his side. Saxa decides to vote Fjord out with Loritz's herself as a Jutal Industries member. In return, Saxa offers the Jutalheim Cree and money. Rand drives Loritz home and wants him to stay out of her family. Loritz mocks that even as a bastard, he is a relation of Vidar's, while the rest are not really a family. Rand attacks Loritz and Magne tries to help, but he is ineffectual. Magne decides to do whatever it takes to win the war and returns to Wotan to resume his powers. Wotan tells him that his greatest weapon is Mjolnir, his only chance against the giants. Magne decides to lie to Loritz and get the Jutulheim key. Magne wants to impress Signy by hanging a banner at Jutul's warehouse. He asks Loritz for Jutulheim's key. Wotan distracts the guards, but they inform Fjord. Inside the old warehouse, Iman keeps a lookout, the rest locate an ancient fort. Iman and Harry fight Fjord, resulting Harry losing a part of his arm. Halvard grabs Mjolnir while Magne escapes. Iman and Halvard are fired. Magne tries throwing Mjolnir, but his powers do not return. Fjord announces that their production will be relocating to Asia where governments are accommodating. Norwegian government realizes there would be a massive job losses and intervenes to allow production. 
as Tom Sapir Magne concludes that lightning created Thor. Loritz meanwhile learns that Magne lied about his powers. Magne awakens Mjolnir by holding it aloft until hit by lightning and his powers return. At Jotulheim, Fjord and Rand find Saxa give the key to Loritz and punish her. Magne goes to Jotulheim to face Fjord but finds an injured Saxa. They have intercourse. Fjord is about to kill Loritz when he claims that he can kill Magne. As Fjord and Rand are about to leave, Magne appears in front of them and attacks them with Mjolnir but they escape. Loritz releases Stormgander into the water while Rand and Fjord watch from the shore. Fans are eagerly anticipating the arrival of Ragnarok season 3 on Netflix which will soon be available for streaming. In the upcoming season, the Norse gods and the giants are set to engage in an epic final battle and Magne, Thor's reincarnation, will face formidable obstacles that will put his resolve to the test. Netflix's Ragnarok season 3 will start streaming on August 24, 2023. Hey hey hey, thank you for watching this video. Do share your thoughts in the comment section about your expectations regarding season 3 of Ragnarok. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema and series. See you on the next one and for the timing we are signing off. Hey there, I am the king of my own land facing dust storms and I will fight until the end and I will be back.